more gaming news, please hit that like button, sit back, relax, and let's begin. So we have a lot of great news this week. The first big piece of news is for a brand new game that was just announced this week. It was revealed and it came out on the exact same day as the reveal. So that is kind of a first time for a big game like this. Usually companies will wait a month or so before releasing a game after it's been announced. Uh, very few games do this, but Apex Legends is a brand new battle royale first person shooter style game in the, I'd say, similar style of Call of Duty Blackout, except it's made by the uh, developers of Respawn Entertainment that created the Titanfall series. So I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with the Titanfall games. Uh, Titanfall 1 and 2 were really unique, kind of like mech slash shooter games when they released. They were kind of like a big hit, uh, specifically the first game. I remember a lot of people talking about that one. And the developers, uh, Respawn Entertainment, very talented group of people. Uh, they've been working apparently for a long time on a first-person shooter, a kind of like Battle Royale style game, and it's called Apex Legends. It was announced and revealed, you know, and shortly after released on all platforms for free. So it's an entirely free game, free to download, free to play, just like Fortnite. The graphics are amazing. Uh, it's on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and apparently it's going to be coming to other platforms, possibly in the future as well. Um, and crossplay is not a thing yet, but I read online that they are thinking about implementing that into the game as well. So, yeah, this, this is a very, like, big, big game that just came out of nowhere. Uh, a lot of people in the comments have been asking me to play it, and... I, I am going to be doing a video for it very, very soon here on the channel. Uh, so far, I really like how the game looks, and just watching streams and people seem to be enjoying it, like, the response has been extremely positive. A lot of people are saying this is probably the best first-person shooter battle royale game, aside from maybe Call of Duty Blackout. Uh, some people are saying it's better than Blackout, some are saying it's on the same level, but either way, uh, it definitely has a lot of fans already, and the developers released a special like statement this week, shortly after the game launched, saying that the game is already downloaded and played by over a million people in just eight hours, so... Within eight hours of the game's release, one million people already signed into play. So that's crazy if you think about it. Uh, not a lot of games can do that. So this this is definitely a special game. So uh, props to the developers, uh, everyone that worked on this game. I bet they're extremely happy just how positive everyone has been. And I can't wait to play it on the channel. So look forward to a video on that very soon. Next, they released a new story trailer for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, or Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Honestly, I hear people pronouncing it Sekiro and Sekiro. I think in Japanese, the correct pronunciation is Sek Sekiro. So, I'll just say it like that. Uh, Shadows Die Twice, a upcoming game by From Software, very similar to Bloodborne and other Souls games. Uh, the gameplay is going to be different, of course, more of an emphasis on action combat. But, 
Uh, this new story trailer shows us some of the backstory for the main character in the game. Uh, a very dark trailer, might I add. Uh, something pretty, pretty intense happens near the end of the trailer, so if you're interested, I recommend checking the trailer out. And honestly, I'm excited for this game. I always, like, enjoy kind of, like, ancient, like, Japanese samurai fantasy-style games, whether they're based on, like, reality or fantasy like it is with this game. Kind of like mythology and lore of... It, it, it just looks really interesting, and I always, I always enjoy this kind of game, so... I think, I think this is probably going to be a big hit when it releases just because of the fan base behind the Souls games like Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Those games usually always sell extremely well, and the story and lore that goes into those uh, is definitely going to transfer over into this game in some way, so I think that's why they released this new story trailer to kind of like tease people about what they can expect in the full game. So, yeah, check that trailer out if you haven't seen it yet uh, for Sek Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. And now we have some fantastic Fortnite news. So I'm really excited about this Fortnite news. Like, really, really happy. I've been waiting months for this ever since Epic Games announced this. So... They are allowing account merging now for the first time ever. So finally, if any of you created a Nintendo Switch account for Fortnite and you have a PlayStation 4 or Xbox account and, you know, for some reason you couldn't merge these two accounts together, now, according to this, this new, like, release by Epic Games, you are able to merge your two accounts into one main account. So an example would be, I have a PlayStation 4 Fortnite account, which is the main one that I use for the channel. And when Fortnite came out on the Nintendo Switch, I had to create a new account because I couldn't use the PS4 account at the time. Uh, they changed this uh, since then, but at the time, I had to create a second account. And since, uh, you know, I had a new account, I decided to buy some skins, some uh, harvesting tools, emotes, and stuff like that. So basically, I have one account on Switch and one account on PS4. Well, now, thanks to Epic Games allowing account merging, I can now merge my Switch and PS4 account into one account. So I'll have all my skins and everything on one account, and I'm really happy. Uh, the process, though, does not go by very fast. It actually takes up to two weeks to complete, so 14 days. I, I just signed up for it yesterday, so I still need to wait 13 days before it's completed. But I'm really happy about this, so if you have two Fortnite accounts and you want to merge them, uh, go on Epic Games' official website. They have the instructions and everything how to do it. It's very simple. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy about this, and I just thought I would announce it in a news video because it's a really big deal for those that have a lot of Fortnite accounts on different devices. Next, we have some Kingdom Hearts 3 news. So, Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, uh, like, last week, and... You know, I'm a big Kingdom Hearts fan. I've been talking about it on this channel for a very long time. Uh, I've been looking forward to playing Cage 3. I'm very close to the end now. Probably going to finish it later today. The game is amazing. And according to Disney and Square Enix, uh, the game has sold and shipped over 5 million copies already. So in the last week... The game has already sold 5 million copies around the world, uh, shipped and digital sales, so this includes physical and digital copies of the game. Now, that is crazy, considering that for, for like an obscure Japanese action RPG, selling 5 million copies in 2019 is kind of unique, like, usually only Final Fantasy even gets close to reaching that number. Uh, worldwide, so 
Uh, I'm curious to see if it'll reach like 8 million or 10 million. Uh, I think a lot of people are playing the game for the first time and just falling in love with the characters and story. Uh, a lot of people that are Disney fans are picking the game up just because they like, you know, Disney characters and Disney worlds to explore. And yeah, it's just a very unique game, so it's it's very successful selling 5 million copies and the developers are very happy about it, so I think that's mainly why they share this number with everyone, so just thought I would mention it on the channel as well just because I love this game and it makes me happy that it's selling very well. <laughs> okay, so this next piece of news is kind of the exact opposite. Um, EA Games is very disappointed that Battlefield V did not meet their expectations in terms of sales. Uh, they're quoted saying that these sales were actually lower than they expected. Uh, Battlefield V, by the way, sold 7.3 million copies worldwide. That's an insanely high number for a video game. Most game companies were, would kill to have that kind of like sales uh, numbers for their game. But EA Games is not. Most game companies, uh, they usually want their games to sell in the 12, 14 million area in order to be considered a success. They probably thought Battlefield V would sell 12 million copies or something crazy like that. So even though the game did sell, it did not sell well enough for uh, EA Games. So they had an investors meeting where they talked about this, how they were disappointed. I mentioned it back when Battlefield V launched that a lot of people were kind of disappointed with the game. And a lot of people this year, last year, went Call of Duty Blackout instead of Battlefield 5, uh, or Black Ops 4 instead of Battlefield 5 because they felt like it was the superior FPS game for the year. So um, I, I saw a lot of people talking about how they weren't picking up Battlefield 5 and were getting Call of Duty instead. So I think that kind of hurt the sales of the game possibly, but yeah. Uh, this does not look well for the future of the Battlefield games because when EA is, is, is disappointed, it usually means that uh, the company that made the last game is skating on thin ice. So I don't think we're going to see Battlefield 6 anytime soon. Maybe they're going to make another Battlefront, you know, Star Wars game or something like that. But yeah, uh, they are not happy with the sales, even though 7 million is an insanely high amount of copies sold. Uh, EA Games is just not happy, so uh, I feel bad for the developers, honestly. Um, DICE, they're, they're extremely talented. I feel like EA doesn't appreciate them like they should. But uh, enough with that. Um, so next, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink a kind of like hack and slash action RPG that was being developed by Platinum Games. Uh, Platinum Games is one of my favorite developers, by the way. They make fantastic character action games. They worked on the Bayonetta series. Uh, they made Bayonetta 1 and Bayonetta 2. They're currently working on the third game. Usually games that they work on are very fast and responsive. They're they're like masters of making the gameplay and games feel amazing, so I was extremely happy when I learned they were involved with the development of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, which is based on like an anime. I haven't seen Grand Blue, I I've heard about it, but uh, all I know is that it's an anime, so I was actually interested in the game just because it was being developed by Platinum Games, but apparently in the last week, uh, they announced that Platinum Games is no longer working on the project, and it's being like developed by in-house developers now, so I'm not sure if it means there were some disagreements or what happened, but yeah, Platinum Games is no longer working on the game, which makes me kind of worried for the game now, because if Platinum's not working on it, I really doubt that the quality is going to be up to a certain standard now, so I'll keep an eye out on the game. 
but I am disappointed that Platinum Games is no longer working on the game. Next, we have some news for Xbox Live is going to be appearing on the Nintendo Switch sometime in the future. So, this is really crazy. Um, I never th thought I would see this coming, but um, yeah, Xbox Live. You know that uh, great subscription service on the Xbox, similar to like the PlayStation Network, uh, PlayStation Plus subscription, Xbox Live, uh, allows you to gain access to Xboxes like Microsoft's fantastic servers. They probably have some of the best servers out of the big three like console manufacturers, I think. They've been doing a great job ever since the 360 even before that with the original Xbox, uh, Xbox Live, for the most part, has been very reliable, except for those few times where they get hacked and it, the, the, net, the network is down for a few days, but yeah. So, according to this, like, recent news, Microsoft is looking to put Xbox Live on the Switch. Now, this doesn't mean that the Nintendo Switch, you're going to turn it on and everything's going to be Xbox Live now, no. Uh, what it means is that in the future, when games like Minecraft or, who knows, Rocket League or other games like that, that Nintendo is going to allow Xbox to use Xbox Live on their system so Xbox and Nintendo Switch players can communicate together in like a group party chat and possibly send messages and stuff like that so it's just another confirmation that Nintendo and Xbox are really getting along recently uh, ever since the whole crossplay thing with Fortnite it seems that Xbox and Nintendo have been in talks together and I guess they have some kind of relationship right now so this is pretty cool, and I look forward to hearing more news about Xbox Live showing up on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, definitely really crazy. I doubt it's ever going to be on PlayStation, though. I can't see Sony allowing Xbox Live on the PS4 or PS5, for that matter. I, I don't think that's ever going to happen. And speaking of voice chat, the Nintendo Switch is going to be getting support for more voice chat and group messaging uh, in the future. So the company that created the voice chat and text chat for Fortnite is releasing developer tools for the Nintendo Switch, which means that in the future any developer that creates Nintendo Switch games they will be able to use the exact same like voice chat and messaging tools that Fort Fortnite uses. So, ever notice how the voice chat in Fortnite is usually really good and the messaging is fast? Well, that is thanks to this company called uh, Vivox or Vi Vivox. Not sure exactly how to pronounce it, but they are the ones that developed that communication for the online of the game. And now they're allowing all developers to use their, uh, like, networking tools when they create Nintendo Switch games. So, that is really, really good news. Hopefully this means that in the future there's going to be a lot more Nintendo Switch games that have better online, like, voice chat and stuff like that. Because I'm not sure if any of you have ever tried to play Splatoon, but the voice chat for that is really complicated. You have to use like your cell phone and download an app and then use your microphone from a headset connected to your cell phone which then pings over to your uh, Nintendo Switch. It's it's insane and so I'm glad that there's going to be an easier method now moving forward. Next, uh, this is a rumor but apparently there is a chance that the next Super Smash Bros. Ultimate DLC character, downloadable character, is going to be a character from Dragon Quest. Uh, there was a rumor a while ago that Erdrick, uh, one of the characters from the original 
Dragon Quest games would be making an appearance of some kind, but that was kind of disproven. Now, a lot of people are thinking that it's possible again, just because one of the developers, uh, I think one of the lead, like, uh, programmers or something on Super Smash Brothers posted an image online of Kirby sitting next to a shield from Dragon Quest. So a lot of fans got, you know, really excited about this. Apparently the shield is from a job class in the Dragon Quest games called Brave. Um, I guess it's similar to a warrior class in the Final Fantasy games. My experience with Dragon Quest is very minimal. I've only played like the fifth and uh, seventh and eighth game and, you know, just a little bit here and there. But yeah, it seems like there is a chance of a Dragon Quest character appearing in Super Smash Brothers now as part of the upcoming DLC. Uh, Nintendo has not commented about this, and maybe this, you know, developer is just a fan of Dragon Quest and decided to post a picture of Kirby and the shield for fun, but a lot of fans are speculating about this, saying that it's 100% confirmed now and that this was a tease of some kind, so I'm not sure, but either way, I'm excited. I can't wait to see what the new DLC characters are going to be like in the game, and I'm really hoping for some unique character choices. So yeah, I'll keep I'll keep y'all informed when I get more news about this. Speaking of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Nintendo released a statement about the Piranha Plant All-Star Mode glitch that I talked about last week. Uh, there was a glitch if you use the Piranha Plant in All-Star Mode in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Apparently, it would corrupt your save data. Well, Nintendo looked into it and said that apparently it's only caused if you have, like, aftermarket brand um, SD cards. So, if your Smash Bros. save data is being saved on an SD card that is not an official branded one, there is a chance that it will be corrupted if you're using, like, Piranha Plant in All-Star Mode. Now, shortly after Nintendo released this information, some people that have, like, official Samsung uh, SD cards mentioned that they still got their save corrupted, so it has nothing to do with the brand of the card, and Nintendo has not responded to this yet, so I really hope they fix it because I'm a little scared of playing uh, Piranha Plant now just in case it might corrupt my save data, and then I'll have to do everything all over again in the game. Uh, well, luckily I have, uh, cloud saves on my Nintendo Switch, so I guess I can always back up my save every time I play or something, but still, I, I hope Nintendo fixes this soon with an update or something. And last piece of news, so to the moon, is a indie game that was released on PC a few years ago. It's been a while, actually, and it won some awards uh, for the music and the story, which apparently is considered to be one of the saddest uh, video games in recent years. A lot of people, when they make top 10 lists of the saddest games they played, they usually put To the Moon on this list. Um, and it was only available on PC for the longest time. Then it came out for mobile phones. And now, finally, it seems that it's going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch. Apparently, someone, like, uh, messaged one of the developers or someone that was involved with the music in the game. And they mentioned that they are looking forward to, like, releasing the game on the Switch and that they don't have any release date right now. But the game is currently, like, planned to release on the Nintendo Switch. So I'm really excited about this. It means that more people will get the chance to play this game. And I really want to play it on my Nintendo Switch as well because I've heard really good things about the music and the story. And even if the game is sad, I'm still going to play it. I'm curious to see 
what, what, what is so sad about it and why it received so many great reviews back when it first released. So, yeah, that is basically all the big news for this week. Uh, Apex Legends is definitely the biggest piece of news, so I can't wait to try that out. And I hope you all enjoyed listening or watching to this ASMR gaming news video. Um, please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you want to help out the channel, uh, you can support the channel on patreon.com uh, slash ASMR gaming. Uh, the link is in the description of this video. And with as little as $1 a month, you can help out the channel and get a shout out in a video. So definitely do that if you want. And thanks for watching and I will see you all next time. So long.